Okay, and we're recording. And Barry, you should be able to. Um, Are you able to open your video? Yeah, I'm gonna no. You. no. Yeah. You should be able to start your video now. Terrific. There you go. Add you. I lost you. There you are. Okay. There we go. And I think it's going to be the two of us on video. So slide this over here. Mr. Foster. Good morning, John. How are you? And Good morning. morning. I, I've unmuted you guys. Uh, this is a question and answer open mic, so we better give you access to your microphones. Uh, can you hear me? I can. Yes, John. Good morning. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. How are you John, doing? John, this is Barry. That's a very distinctive black and white picture of you. <laughs> I can't. Oh, there is my picture. Okay. Let me let me figure out how to change the video. You may not be able to in a webinar. Oh, okay. All right. So All right. We're going to just us girls. We're going to wait and see. We have Roy Pelicano is on, and um, Jack Heil has just joined us. Good morning, Jack. It's going to be a pretty tight group this morning, guys. So we'll be able to answer your questions. Um, we have, um, and yeah, we have a, a much tighter registration, which is good. So we'll give it a couple more minutes for, uh, we did have over a dozen people or a dozen people registered the last time I looked yesterday. And, and so we'll give them a chance to uh, air Stephen White. All right, guys, I'm, I'm uh, clicking the allow to talk button and uh, just, you know, we're gonna have a good conversation here. So one more minute, there's Jack. Good morning, Jack. Hey, George, good to see you again. Thank you. Good to be seen. Now, <laughs> since we did this, uh, the um, since we did the test drive last week, I actually uh, went down with COVID, so started having symptoms the afternoon after after our test drive, and uh, and you know here we are. It's, it's it sounds horrible. It's just like a bad cold. So. I'm sure some of you have been through it, I'm sure. Uh, George and Barry, I apologize in advance. I have a 1120, so I'm gonna hang as long as I can, then I've got to bail. Okay, well, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, here's Ray McKenzie. Hey, good morning, Ray, how are you? All right, good morning, George. How are you doing? Long time no talk. Yeah, I know, it's been a long time. It's good to, good to have you. Thanks for joining us. Definitely, thank hey, you for inviting me. So guys, with uh, with webinars, you typically get somewhere between half and uh, two thirds of the attendees. Uh, Ed Wonky has joined us. Um, of the registrants, we had 12 registrants for this Q&A. We had a, a heck of a lot more for the, the test drive. We had great attendance. So what we're gonna do is uh, go ahead and start. Uh, I'm gonna minimize the attendees. I'll keep an eye on it. Sarah, if you could keep an eye on it also. Um, and if you're able to give people, uh, unmute people in the, uh, so guys, this is an open mic. It's your opportunity to ask us questions about business advisor peer groups, um, what, why, how, and uh, questions that came out of the test drive. Some of you were not able to join us for the test drive, which is great. So let me explain a little bit of the process. I'm joined today by, um, by Barry Goodman. Uh, Barry is a, an extremely experienced, 30 plus years of experience um, as a business advisor. Uh, he started and grew a very successful CPA firm um, and uh, is, a, is a credentialed exit planner and an all around, uh, all around good guy. And Barry, you want to say a couple of words before, uh, before we move into the transition? Uh, sure. Um, I spent uh, about 35 plus or minus years in public accounting and uh, retired from, uh, from my firm in 2014, started a consulting business, Brookdale Transition Partners, to focus on helping uh, closely held businesses and family held businesses transition and figure out what's next for them and grow value in uh, as they're doing that um, and give them some options on what's next in their life. Uh, a lot of uh, 
family uh, discord uh, in that process um, makes it uh, quite an interesting business. Yeah, and Barry's going to, so Barry's vast experience running chapters uh, for uh, associations, uh, running a firm, uh, being an advisor, being down in the trenches, but Barry is a tremendous resource and Barry is the group leader for our uh, business advisor peer groups. So guys, with every meeting, uh, every peer group meeting starts with a transition into the meeting. And that transition is typically, uh, you know, it's just stay, say, give your name, you know, and uh, on a scale of one to five, where are you? For example, this morning, I'm a, I'm a 4.95. There's always room for improvement, but I am fired up. I'm a 4.5. Uh, and uh, one word description, and I'll actually just use fired up. That's two words. So every, we're going to go around the room. And if you can unmute yourself and uh, just say on a scale of one to five, uh, you know, where are you as a number? And uh, personally, professionally, doesn't matter, you pick. And one, uh, one word description of your mindset. So I'm going to, uh, probably easiest if I just, if I pass it around the room, I'll start with uh, with Ed. Good morning, Ed. You're top of the list. Go ahead. Uh, one. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Uh, let's see, I'm probably a four. Uh, the, the description of my mindset right now is uh, anxiously awaiting. Um, I've got a lot of work that I have proposed and we're waiting to get follow through. Everybody took yesterday off and nobody... Uh, finished up anything last week. So uh, this week, I'm hoping to see at least uh, two projects that I proposed on come to fruition. Cool. Excellent, Ed. Jack Hyle, one, one uh, number and one, uh, one word description. Um, well, I don't know. I'll just, I'll go ahead and say a four. And um, grateful is my one word description. Excellent. Excellent. John Foster? Uh, four enthused about 2021 2020 2022 2022 yeah, i know it's hard i've had to start writing that and um all right perfect john jack how about you um i would say let's say a three i'm anxious um i'm more on the front lines now i used to be a director of advanced sales and business planning for our agency and now on the uh front lines more so excited and anxious at the same time excellent excellent nervous energy fantastic uh ray mckenzie all right good morning ray mckenzie um gosh based in redondo beach california on a scale of one to five and probably a 4.75 just got out to gym so rocking and rolling on the west coast um one word description of mindset um i'd say determined you know, we've got to, uh, we're coming back from the holiday and trying to get some things and you know, pumped out. So let's get it done. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, Ray, I'm glad you're able to join us. Roy Pelicano. Uh, morning, everyone. Uh, I would say I'm about a three, uh, which I don't see as a negative thing, but um, I am definitely slogging through the molasses. <laughs> Positively, but still slogging. It's still slugging. Hey, it's 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 good to have molasses to slug through, right? And uh, and Stephen White, I can hit the mute button quick enough. Um, <laughs> I am a four, and the word is focus. Focused. I like it. Excellent. All right, uh, gentlemen. It's and we're just it's all gentlemen on this call today. So um, with that. So that's, you know, that sets our mindset. We understand where, where each other are. I'd like to take a moment and, uh, and just recap, for those of you who are not in the original meeting, what, what happens? What, what is a business advisor peer group? And in, in a nutshell, it is a peer-to-peer a -peer council of 10 to 12 non-competing professionals. We're drawing on management consultants, CPA business advisors, certified financial planners and exit planners, um, m a professionals and fractional CFOs principally. And uh, it's a once a month meeting with a set agenda. So the content changes every month, but like any good meeting, the agenda is a standing agenda. It's two and a half hours, confidential environment. This is going to be done virtually. And one of the, one of the powerful things when I say non-competing, there may be two m a professionals in the group, for example, but not from the same market. So what we want to do is, is we are creating groups um, and, and guys, we already have uh, uh, people signing up. So it's already a terrific 
the core of the group is already uh, terrific, uh, that represents the advisors who are, sit, who are around the table helping a business owner. And imagine if as you build your practice, as you develop new products and services, as you work in your client engagements, if you are able to tap into and in a, in a, inside the circle of trust, tap in with the same women and men every week, uh, every month, uh, into their, you know, their perspective. How powerful would that be for your practice? And uh, these are going to be facilitated by Barry Goodman, as we said. And it's it's all of it's completely confidential under NDA, and. It has a, uh, it's a, a very, an excellent value. It's $375 a month with a hundred percent satisfaction guarantee. Meaning if after your first meeting, you say, actually, this isn't for me, uh, we'll part friends. Okay. Um, Barry, anything you'd like to add there? Uh, no, the, um, no, I have nothing else to add. Uh, uh, okay. Terrific. And in this process, we use the methodology that was developed by Tina Corner Stoltz. Um, she uh, has been in Ma the Mastermind Peer Group business. Moder she's a fantastic moderator. Um, that's a, in most of her career. And uh, she, that's the LX Council, Leadership Exchange Council is the name of her company. We license their methodology. Um, and it's built around the COPI. And a COPI is a challenge, an opportunity, a problem or an idea uh, on, on with which you would like some help, feedback from the group, okay? So every meeting, you will have the opportunity to present your own copy. Um, it can be a, a struggle, an opportunity, something to celebrate, and be able to help your, uh, your peers with their, uh, with their copy, with their challenge, opportunity, problem, or idea. It's incredibly powerful, guys. I'm in a group. Um, I know... A couple of you on the call are, 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 are in groups. It is, my, the light bulb went off in my, I think my second meeting. I, I, it, it's incredibly helpful uh, to, to me as I run these two businesses. And, I, and we're offering these, we're, we've decided to, to add this service because you guys have been asking for it, okay? So it's a question and answer format. So we make sure we drill down to the real issue Sometimes the, the issue that we, you know, that we first identify isn't the actual issue. Drill down to get to the real issue with questions and then present ideas, suggestions. Um, and there's accountability in the group for yourself to the group um, and of the group to you. So with that summary, um, if anybody, we're gonna, we're gonna jump in, we'll open up the mic. So, yeah, I have a question, George. Please, John. This is John, and it's for Barry. Um, Barry, thanks for taking the lead on on this with George's in, uh, involvement. Um, what is your vision for this group? Um, that's a good question, John. the The vision for the group is to put together ten or twelve people that can really become integral to each other uh, and important to each other. Uh, drawing on my past experience of being in um, a group for about 10 to 15 years when I was working, was I was running the accounting practice, the, we, would, we would all bring different, what we call copies in this case, to the group and it was so beneficial and it helped me work through some critical issues and run my practice and, and run the firm better. Um, and that's what I, my vision is that each participant will be able to operate better individually because they're part of a more than one. In, in other words, we can all do better if we are not doing things alone. And, um, that to me is uh, is really um, a vision and a mission of this um, of this group. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, John. It's not going to surprise you that that coincides with uh, with our our vision and mission to help you each of you build a thriving practice. And I think that this uh, the peer groups are a game changer. Uh, it's a well-established, proven uh, success model. 
Next question. What is the, uh, George, what is the exit? Let's say you like it for four months, but then it's not doing what you want it to do or you've been distracted elsewhere. What's the exit uh, obligation? Yeah, we ask for 90 days notice so that we can replace you. You know, we stop recruiting for the group. Um, so we ask for 90 days uh, notice. Right, right. Okay, thank you. Certainly, thanks, Jack. Jack, if I can also respond to your question, you know, if, if let's say after the, uh, at the end of four months, you find that it's not for you, you know, before then, I would hope that we would have some discussion to see if there's some things that are missing, uh, some things that are not going in the direction that you anticipated, because perhaps you have some better ideas or some ideas that can make the, the group better. Um, because it's critical that we have that open communication uh, to always do better. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, for me, it's um, I'm always impressed with the firepower that George and everyone brings to the table, and I always feel like I'm less than. And my results kind of show that. Uh, I don't know if I'm just a dyed in the wool CPA that can't break into the consulting, but it's always a challenge for me. And even when I get that opportunity, so I was um, trying to think, um, would this group be able to help me break that pattern that I have, that I create, uh, not what George provides or any of the other people. So I don't know if that helps you understand where I'm coming from. Well, it, Jack, it does. And uh, to that extent, I've, I, I experienced that myself. Um, so uh, not to toot my own horn, there, there is some, um, some background that, um, that you have in these groups. And this is not the first time um, in putting the group together that I've ex we've experienced that question um, because it is, um, it is sometimes a paradigm shift and to have that support uh, for, any, for any change, um, I have found, um, in my career that that's that, that support is critical um and um we can discuss that further if you'd like sure thank you thanks jack next question with the two and a half hour um plan for conversation is there any semblance of giving something to the time of the day uh, that that might be planned for. All of the one person on the West Coast, uh, he just finished his exercise. Uh, he probably won't be able to come prepared well to engage adequately in, in a discussion. Uh, I'm concerned what time of the day would we primarily want to run these um, meetings? Well, the advantage of the of the first group of, of the uh, of the first attending the first meeting, which is next week, um, we will as a group will decide what time of the day and what day of the week is is appropriate for all the people in the group, um, because we want to be able to accommodate everybody and we want to be able to have good participation. So, because uh, one of the um, caveats is that you need to come, you need to be able to attend meetings because you get out of this, whatever you put into it, like anything else. So we'll be able to decide as a group what time of day and what day of the week uh, would be most appropriate. Because there are, you know, we, we realize we're doing this virtual and there are those time, uh, those time differences. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, I, I have, uh, you know, guys, the, the, it is virtual, but we are, we are looking at, and it's something we'd like to discuss, you know, also with the group, is getting together face-to-face -to -face in, there are two conferences every year that, that Core Value and Growth Crowd host, um, on joint conferences, and being able to get together face-to-face -to -face and having a face-to-face -face meeting um, at one of those conferences, which doesn't obligate you to come to the conference, but if you wanted a face-to-face -face opportunity, um, a couple of times a year, but that's um,
Hey, Barry, I was going to, I have a question for you. Could, could you outline for the group uh, the onboarding and uh, the quarterly components uh, of the program? Sure. The, the onboarding uh, consists of um, understanding what some of your strategies are. There's a, uh, there's a format to do that. Um, also, we do a, um, a DISC assessment, which is a sort of a behavioral assessment. Not sort of, it is a behavioral assessment, but it really it, um, helps you to understand, others to understand how to communicate. Um, it's really great to um, have in your own business. Uh, and when I, uh, when I did mine, it was like, oh my gosh, it's spot on with my behaviors. And in fact, I shared some of the things with my wife and um, we've been married a long time. And she says, you know, that's exactly how you behave. Uh, uh, behave when you get triggered or behave when you're just communicating. Uh, that's part of it. Um, and um, the quarterly uh, the quarterly strategy session where we uh, talk about this check in on um, where you're at with your quarterly goals, um, you know how you're progressing, what's standing in the way, and that develops into actually into coping. Uh, but there's um, it, it's a it's a quarterly check in uh, to be able to understand. Nothing. Terrific. Yeah, the the, uh, the strategic component of this is uh, is powerful. So, okay, other questions, uh, guys. Well, I, I have a question for everybody. You know, everybody on the on the call is, you know, what would what would your expectation be from from a uh, from a peer group, based on what you know today. Um, this is Ray. I I would suspect kind of what I would expect from a peer group of some sort would be one, you know, identification of challenges for everyone, and then ongoing tracking of those challenges for the next four to six weeks, perhaps. So that at the end of maybe four, six, eight weeks and the meetings that are ensuing, um, you have some sort of goal management, um, performance management, um, you know, check-ins with where people are performing or how things are going with their challenges or are, is it beneficial um, or do things need to change? Uh, I think that's kind of where it would start for me, which is, you know, the accountability factor. Um, in making sure that, you know, one, everybody in the group, obviously we're gonna have our challenges, um, but then having our challenges, we keep ourselves accountable um, and then measuring and tracking that. Um, I think that's a big benefit to any of the peer groups that I've been a part of. Great, so uh, George, can you go back to the slide that talks about the coping? Yes. Okay, this is the, uh, you know, processing a copy is one of the central parts of every meeting. Um, and um, when we do the, and it comes from a couple things. One, you, you come prepared with a copy, but two, oftentimes when we do the check-in like we did on this call um, and find out where you're at, um, that oftentimes will develop into a copy, which is a challenge, opportunity, problem, or idea. And Ray, to answer your question, after the after the copy is presented, and after you know, we're describing the situation, you know why it's important and so forth, and getting questions, um, at following meetings, because we meet once a month, at every meeting, we'll ask for updates of the um, of how that individual did, how that member did, with um, with the feedback that they received, and. Um, when the, and if they didn't do anything, well, they're challenged as to why. And if they did something, you know, what was the result? And um, uh, so that we can keep people accountable uh, for 
following through on what their challenges, opportunities, problems, or ideas are. Yeah, you're accountable to the group because everyone's investing time. Right. Um, because we're investing time within the meeting and others may have copies. Uh, so we really try to uh, uh, keep people accountable. And what's interesting is relatively quickly on that accountability and, and uh, you, you'll find yourself reaching out outside of the formal meeting. You know, Ray, you and I might, you know, you, I might contact you and say, hey, I've been thinking about that, that uh, challenge you have. Um, have you considered? And we might do, you know, you end up very quickly sidebarring with members of the group and uh, and it's and then you know coming back and and uh, and bringing it back into the, the plenary session um, at the following meeting. And it also doesn't mean that we're not in communication in between meetings. You could always pick up the phone and call a member and um, and get some feedback at that point in time. So. Yeah, absolutely. Great question, right? Uh, you know, uh, Barry, I, uh, answering your question, I just wrote down a few thoughts myself. I would love to improve as a consultant. I'd like to gain access to expertise, and I'd also like to fine-tune my processes uh, in my practice. And so those would be the kind of things that, if I felt there was a possible assist towards that, that would interest me in, in moving forward. Well, and you'll receive that again, uh, Jack, from the COPE uh, process. Um, you know, and that becomes important because they'll ask you questions, they'll come back with suggestions. Um, and uh, so that, so yes, that will, uh, those items you mentioned will be addressed, um, but it'll be addressed through the COPE process. And if there's additional conversations that need to take place, well, they can also take place. Absolutely. And Jack, you just hit the nail on the head. That's exactly what, what you will, what the benefit that you will get from participating in the group. You know, it's interesting in talking to several people um, about potentially joining uh, the group. In fact, two, uh, two people who have signed up. Um, they, for example, want, were thinking about marketing. And, you know, will, this, will the group talk about marketing? I said, you can talk about anything you want. You know, if marketing is your challenge, and put it in as a copy, and let's hear from 11 other pros what they're doing to generate, you know, to, to increase their, the strength of their brand, to bring in new engagements, to collaborate um, with their centers of influence, with other people in the group, et cetera, uh, to, to, uh, to, to help win new engagements. And, uh, you know, the, the sky's the limit on what can be, what can be discussed, tackled, um, and collectively worked into uh, into solutions. Right. Thank you. Sure. Great question. About five minutes remaining. Any any other questions, guys? <laughs> if there aren't aren't any other questions, Barry, anything you wanted to uh, wanted to add? Because I'd like to go around the room and see if we if, you know get some key takeaways. No, I think the, uh, we had some good interaction and they were spot on with the purpose and the goals and objectives and vision of, um, of what we're doing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, oh, Anna Halliburta has joined us. Hi, Anna. I just, I just uh, opened your microphone. Good afternoon or good morning, George. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. Um, you haven't had an opportunity to, uh, I'm thrilled that you're here. Um, I, you haven't had an opportunity to ask any questions. I do apologize for my tardiness here, George. Uh, it seems uh, this is the earliest I've been late all day, but I'm still too late with five minutes left. <laughs> I do apologize. No problem. Do you have any questions about business advisor peer groups, um, how they're structured, how they can help you? Uh, you know, the one thing I will say, George, is that I was part of uh, a peer group uh, several years ago for specifically CPAs. And uh, let's say the, the monthly fee cost was uh, substantially greater than uh, what you are charging for here, but it was, they talked about many of the same things that you've talked about. So this is a wonderful opportunity 
for, for people who uh, aren't in a mastermind group, haven't been in a mastermind group. So the peer group to me is kind of like a mastermind group of forward thinkers and people that want to move their businesses, their practices along in the direction that they want it to go. Uh, and with all of the uh, tools that core value has, if they do it on themselves, they'll see oftentimes uh, what they need a bit of shoring up on. And so, so I think this is right time, right place, uh, right thing to do. Yeah, fantastic, Anna. Yeah, Anna, it, it, yes. Um, I won't recap what you just said. You just said it very well. Thank you. Uh, so for those of you who don't know Anna, she's a, she's a good friend, as many of you are, and uh, is a CPA, is a growth advisor, uh, is, a, uh, is an exit planner, and does a lot of, uh, has actually has a business called Be Ready. Um, yeah, and I, I, I value your input. Thank you. So guys, we are, we are at the bottom of the hour. 30 minutes goes very quickly. I'm wondering if we can go around the room and just uh, ask you for one key takeaway uh, from, uh, from our conversation today. And, and you can hit us up with questions uh, by email or pick up the phone and call. Um, call and, and we're happy to help because the next step would be to schedule an interview um, to get to know Barry a bit more and for Barry to get to know about you, make sure there's a good fit and that this is going to be something we really want people to join the group and we're committed to, to finding people to, to bring into the group who are in it for the long, the long haul and where there's going to be a very good fit, okay? So the best way to do that is to have a, a candid interview. Um, we'll schedule that with Barry, confirm synergies between you, you Barry, and the group, and, uh, <clears throat> and then decide on a best path forward for you. So um, there's the contact information. I think you all know how to get hold of us. Uh, I'd love to go around and just take, you know, if you just have one sentence uh, key takeaway. I know, Anna, you just joined, but you're top of my list. You have, uh, you have one, one key takeaway from today? When there is an opportunity and you decide not to take it, then you're deciding on doing the same things that you've been doing, and you're not going to move forward. Yeah. Couldn't agree with you more. Uh, thank you. Uh, Ed, and by the way, guys, every meeting closes with one key takeaway. Um, has, is, that's a component of, the, of, the, uh, of winding up the meeting. Ed, one key takeaway? Uh, you know, as a standalone practitioner, um, probably it's an opportunity to put a little bit more organization uh, to my activities as opposed to being driven solely by personal motivation. Terrific. Uh, Jack Ha. Um, collaboration and insight. Um, I think it's an interesting and intriguing um, offering that I'm, I um, would like to explore further. Okay, excellent. Thanks, Jack. Um, Ray McKenzie. All right. I'd say uh, different perspectives through experience can be extremely helpful for growth. Um, yeah, that's kind of it. Yeah, terrific. Thanks, Ray. And 303, is that you, Anna, or is that a different dial in? No, the, uh, 303 is one of mine, but I think that's a separate dial in. Okay. Great. Well, uh, then, then that's, uh, then we've been around the horn here. I know people had to drop off at the bottom of the hour. So with that, guys, uh, I'll contact. Uh, we'll be contacting each of you, and uh, and uh, I'm looking forward to next steps. So thank you very much. And with that, uh, Barry, any closing thoughts? No, I think we're in good shape, George. Okay, you're muted. We heard, we heard him. Oh, okay. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to wrap up the meeting. Thank you very much, and uh, we will circle around with each of you. Have a Thank great you. day. Bye. Thank great. you, Ted. Thanks. Bye, Ed. Bye, Bye Anna. Ed.